in Locust Grove, Oklahoma, 45 minutes east of Tulsa, the best quarterback-receiver combination in Oklahoma high school football history are about to start their senior year. Mason Fine threw for more than 5,000 yards as a junior. Most of those passes were caught by close friend Jason Pirtle, who scored 29 touchdowns. When they were little kids, both guys dreamed of playing big-time college football, and now the letters from colleges around the country are stacking up. Growing up, you know, I watched um, Adrian Peterson for the OU Sooners, and um, you know, watching him really got me involved in football. And that's I wanted to be a football player at that early age, and so I probably have to say, you know, OU, you know, OU, just any of those Big 12 schools. But when I was a kid, it probably would have been OU. Yeah, same thing about OU. I loved OU when I was a kid, but uh, as I've gotten older, I've kind of and been to a few games. I've kind of transferred into an OSU fan. I just love the atmosphere there and facilities there, and it's a pretty cool place. Here we go. Here we go. First group, make both the time. But there's a catch. Despite their outstanding numbers on the field, college recruiters seem to consider Mason too small and Jason too slow. You know, I can make any throw that any quarterback can, can make in the country. I feel like I'm right there with them. You know, arm strength and accuracy. It's just my size is a killer. But you know, I'm, I'm going to this season and through summer, I'm going to show these coaches and recruiters that you know I am a D1 FBS quarterback. It's not all about numbers and speed and stuff, that as long as you play with passion and heart and you play as hard as I, as I do, and you should be fine. And I hope to prove that this summer and next season and hope somebody takes a chance on me. One other thing drives the Locust Grove Pirates. April 1st marked the second anniversary of the death of Big Kale Davidson in a 2013 car crash. After his funeral, the team promised they would win a championship. They play for each other, they play for Locust Grove, and they play for Big Kale. With Jason, you know, we have the same dreams and goals and aspirations. And so you know, we hang out all the time because he's going down the right path. And so I know if I can travel with him, you know, it's easier as a transition. But we both know where we want to go, and we're both going to help each other, um, you know, achieve our goals and dreams. Checkers picking up rocks. It, it didn't matter as long as it, he could make a competition out of it. He would he would make a competition and had to try to win. I just like to go out and compete and whatever. I mean, I've always been like that. I don't know if I mean my dad always. I mean, he raced a little bit as a kid. I mean, he did boats and he raced cars and. I grew up watching a lot of sports, so I don't know if it's from that, but uh, I don't know. It's just something that, I guess, just natural. I just always love to compete. I started riding my first go-kart when I was two. I wasn't tall enough to reach the pedals, so I had my cousin uh, sit behind me, and so he had to push the pedals and I had to steer and stuff. It was always mind games back then. I mean, everything's so mental. I mean, it's all about what you think you can do and how hard you want to work to do it, so. Yeah, I mean, I can see where that, that probably helped me a lot in competing and working hard because I hated losing and I'd always just go out and try to get better every time I was on the track. Move, set, go! And I'd always try to launch it inside that little, you know, canopy in there and see how close I always got. And so now you can see that it's, it's ripped and all the boards are gone. And so, yeah, I destroyed that with all the footballs and stuff, so. My dad wasn't too happy about that. Go! Touch go! He knew he was going to do some good things, uh, do great things when he was younger, uh, just because of his motivation, uh, just because of it, you know, the way he, he drove himself, and uh, you just, you just knew he was, uh, you just knew he was going to be a, you know, a top-notch player as he got older. He's always wanted to push himself more than any kid. Like I said. I haven't, his dad hasn't pushed him, he has that driver who pushes himself. Um, and we've been really blessed with, with him having that drive. I think that's why he has such high goals, um, because of his competitive drive. Dear Kill, I along with everybody miss you. You inspired me to try harder. 
Kale, I am promising you right now that I'm going to dedicate my season and the rest of my football career to you. Dear Brig Kale, I promised myself that I would play every play like it was my last. I fell away from that, but I promised you that I will always play for you. Mason and Jason can't do it alone. This part was supposed to be about the team that surrounds them. As we met the team, got to know them, talked with them every day, one name kept coming up, Big Kale. Kale Davidson is a driving force for this senior class, but he never suits up. Freshman year, when he died in a car accident, every player wrote a letter to Big Kale and placed it in his locker. The letters haven't been touched since. I've never read one of them. I stick them in his locker and they're there. And I'll refer back to him. Are you doing what you said you're, uh, that letter says? You know, I mean, Kale's kind of my assistant coach, my motivator. I swear to you, Kale, that I will play every game, practice and scrimmage for you. I love you. You're my brother and still are from Panther. rescue truck went by first. I said, I hope nobody had been hurt in a wreck out there on Anderson Road. And two and a, over two hours later, I found out it was your grandson. You know, when, you're pers when a person in your family is really sick or something happens to them, most of the time you know it and you can pray for them, you know. But we didn't have such uh, the chance to pray for him. Didn't, have no, didn't say no goodbye, you know. This whole town's just been super, mm -hmm. especially the kids. And when that happened to Kel, and Coach Hennessy came over, and I remember holding Coach's hand mm -hmm. and holding each other's hand. And Coach, he was he was just trembling. Mm -hmm. His first pra first or second practice at football as in youth, you know, it's always in the hottest part of the day. And they were at practice and he had a kidney shot and <laughs> it kind of roughed him up. And so um, after we laughed, I wasn't sure if Kel would play or not, but uh, the next day he padded up, had his helmet on and everything. We got to practice and Kel said, I'm not gonna play. <laughs> and so, I just told him, I said, Cal, I said, you know, you're, you're part of a team now. And I said, you've started this. I said, I think you should give it a chance. And I said, play your first game. I said, I'm not going to make you do something you don't want to do. I said, play your first game and see what happens. He played the first game and that's it. That's the beginning of Cal's love for football. <laughs> that's my baby. <laughs> yeah. I think he loved being part of a team, number one. I really do. And um, I just think, you know, the sport itself, um, that camaraderie, you know, something that he just, he really loved. It's very meaningful um, to know that, that he's remembered like that and to know the impact that Kel had made on others. It's not only meaningful, it's helped me through the greatest challenge of my life. I will keep these promises. When I get tired, what the team does, I want you to keep us up. We did us. We dedicate this season to you. We all love you and miss you. And we are gonna get that gold ball. And that ring to your bone. I believe that's going to happen, yes. Um, this team, we work too hard, and we have Big Hale, our guardian angel, up top. And it's this year, it's now. So I believe it 100%. He's all over us. People know that we play for him. And they know, I think that's why people are intimidated of us sometimes, because they know that we have another guy out there with us. And we're not just playing for ourselves, we're playing for a guy that can't do it no more. He's watching over us all the time, he's out there playing with us still. I mean, he's the reason that we win. I mean, 
We're probably the 12 people. I will lead this team for you. You made me realize how lucky and blessed we really are. And I miss you and I love you. Sincerely, Mason Fine. They're too short, they're too slow, they're too little, they're too this, they're too that. But you can't measure heart. And these guys, and a lot of it I think has to do with playing for Big Kale. They got, they got something bigger to play for than just the gold ball. They're not playing to put that ring on their finger. They're playing to put that gold ball on his grave. You know, we're not gonna go through probably Main Street or anything. We're gonna get off 412, we're gonna go straight down to the cemetery. They've talked about that since, uh, well, the first season. Every year, they're getting closer. Yeah. I believe that uh, there's a real possibility it'll happen. <laughs> you better believe Big Hell is out there watching us and on the field with us. Say my name! We had a better! Talk at me, baby! It's good to leave with a win anytime, but uh, it's not what we're here for. You know, we're here to bring the gold ball back for this town and Big Hill, and everybody supports us. Homecoming week, and Locust Grove is in a rhythm. The star quarterback in a small town has obligations at homecoming. Before their game against Westville, Mason Fine escorted his girlfriend and senior attendant, Callie Collins. He says exactly what he is supposed to when the cameras are rolling. I'm trying to think about it too much. I'm just trying to, trying to focus on the game and go out there and do what we're supposed to do. Mason Fine is doing something that no other high school quarterback in Oklahoma history has ever done. It's a probably a once in a lifetime thing that, you know, as a coach, it's going to happen for you. It's uh, he's going to put a record up that probably won't be broken for a long time. Fine moved into second place in Oklahoma's all-time passing list when he surpassed 10,000 yards. Mr. Mason Fine just broke over the 10,000 mark, second time in the history of Oklahoma football. 10,001 yards as of right now. Congratulations, Mason Fine. He's pretty much the leader of our pirate assault. I mean, he's the commander in chief. He takes us out there every night and he goes, puts points up on the board, and gets us a win. One more thing he can also catch. He could have gotten the record when the team traveled to Tahlequah to play Sequoia High School. It's not like we're coming down to the last game and we're going to have to push to try to get it. He's going to get the record. Uh, we knew that going into the season. We knew we didn't do, need to do anything except what our number one goal is go win games. So. Whatever we need to do to win the football game, that's what we're going to do. And when he gets the record, he'll get the record. Well, I've said since, since for two years, he's the best high school quarterback I've ever seen. And I've been doing it 23 years. Ron Lancaster said he's the best high school quarterback he's ever seen. And he's been doing it for about a thousand years. So, I mean, I think, you know, whoever wants to weigh in can weigh in however they want. And, and uh, but the fact, yeah, that he's, he holds the record, his name will be in the record book. It already is for single season, it already is for touchdowns, it already is, you know, this is just another one that he doesn't have yet, but the one we want is the one where it says Locust Grove Pirates State Champions. This is everybody's record, this ain't my record, this, this is the whole team and community's record. I wouldn't achieve this, you know, if I do achieve this record, it wouldn't just because of me. And the reason that we're in the situation right now is because of all the work that we put in as a team, you know, four years ago or three years ago with the offense line then and the running backs and receivers, it's everybody's go. It was receiver groups from last year, the receiver groups for, before then, it was the running backs before that, and the offensive line, just the coaches are getting us better each year and out, you know. And um, it's just, just going to be a great, you know, team record. Ahead 44-12, to 12, Fine was pulled from the game. No record. But a week later, Claremore Sequoia would come to Locust Grove, and Fine would need just 157 yards to surpass Atoka quarterback LT Poff. When he took the field, everyone knew what was coming. With that pass, the record was his. With that pass, Mason Vine becomes the most prolific passer in every conceivable category for these Lesser Show Pirates. Take a look at number nine, 
You will not see another one like him in your lifetime. Fine and his team had weeks to prepare a celebration, a perfect look at me moment, a dance. Instead of celebrating, taking his moment in the spotlight, Fine and the Pirates turned everyone's attention to Colt Rowland, a Locust Grove seven-year-old battling leukemia. It is Mason's big night. He loves Mason. He's allowing my son to go out there and be a part of his history. And that means everything to us. That means absolutely everything to us. He, that kid has more dignity and more class than most men twice his age. And he worries about everybody but himself. Job, I have four on board. Passenger's name is Colt Rowland. had to be life flighted to Tulsa and it was very, it was horrible. He was in ICU for several days on a breathing machine. I mean, it, it was horrible. And so one of the things that meant the most to Hennessy was that he got life flight involved tonight. He said, you know, I want Colt to have this great experience with life flight and not be afraid of medical people. And so that in itself is amazing. You know, the one thing that this week's kind of showed us all is that there's things more important in life than football. Oh, he's excited. This is better than going to Disney World for Colt. I don't want this the record to take away any from these this people's night, especially Colt Rollins, because it, it is his night to shine. And um, I mean, he, he's been through a lot, and just to have this one good thing, memory, good memory for him, would be the world to me. He loves football loves football. He says his dream is to be a wrestler and a football player for OSU. <laughs> At the end of the game, instead of Fine being the small town hero, Locust Grove made Colt the hero. He took a handoff from the new record holder and got started on his own record, scoring his first touchdown. I think, you know, once you get to the playoffs, you know that, you know, every week can be your last. So, I mean, you use that to, you know, use that as fuel. So you go out there each day and you work as hard as you can. You leave it out all out there on the field and just um, I know that tomorrow isn't promised. The playoffs, it's what you play all season for. But there's also an underlying finality to the postseason. When it's over, it's over. That's the hardest on the seniors. basically just keep doing what we're doing and and uh, you know we always go back to the fundamentals when we start when we first start the first round of the playoffs and in practice try to take it back to the fundamentals go back to try to remember what got us here. Ladies and gentlemen I hope you're staying for senior night so if you would uh, head down to the field surface right now. Bad. Been involved in yeah, I know. football. Since he's going to graduate with you and go wherever you go. Right? He was the. Uh, How does that work? Uh, yeah. 2014 Mace County. I'm just glad we got four more weeks. Yeah. 1537 Wipe. Ain't ready for you to graduate just yet. In the state, you can't have senior night during the playoffs, so you have to do it after the game. And we had won. We were so far there in the sweats. The town of local. I'm going to make Big Hill happy. Boy, you are making history, honey. <laughs> we're proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> when the Locust Grove Pirates started this year's playoff run, they were perfect 10 0 and had won their games by an average score of 56 to 19. It brings a different intensity, you know, and uh, every, every week in practice, every day you come out and you, you work harder than you have before because, you know, it's, it's going to be the end of your season and you don't want to go out having regrets. I can't tell you how proud I am of these group of seniors and the, and the whole team, but this group of seniors for what they've done in their four years. Um, you know, when we got here and, and I'm looking at these kids that are little eighth graders sitting in the gym in the spring and, you know, the look in their eyes and I'm telling them, hey, if you'll buy in, we can make this happen. They got nothing to go on except for they've, they've never seen a winning team at the high school ever. So they're just trusting us. Beautiful solo 
final tackle by number 12. You know, you go in confidence just like every other game, like you're going to win, and, and it really hits you when you're a senior too, because uh, it's more than just your final game of the season, but it's, uh, it's your final game of your career possibly, and so you, uh, you go out and you, uh, you just do everything you can, and uh, you don't want it to be your last game. In a third round quarterfinal game at Lone Grove, things were different. The rain was different, the mud was different, the Longhorns were different. Through their first 12 games, quarterback Mason Fine had completed 67% of his passes for nearly 4,200 yards and 53 touchdowns, almost 350 yards and more than four touchdowns per game. And he had thrown just four interceptions all season. Fine's top target, wide receiver Jason Pirtle, had pulled in 90 catches for almost 1,700 yards and 19 touchdowns, nearly 140 yards a game. Against Lone Grove, Fine completed just five of 15 passes for 64 yards with no touchdowns and three interceptions. Pirtle's day ended with just two catches for 20 yards. I told our kids at halftime, I said, you got two choices right now. You can either come out and battle, or I can go over and tell them to do a running clock if y'all want. If y'all want to be like those other schools, and, and adamantly, our senior students said no. We're not doing a running clock. We're going to go battle it out. We're going to finish it out, and, you know. And and in that in those conditions, we I knew that the chances were slim of us coming back. But you know, when you got Mason at quarterback, you never you never doubt it. But he just couldn't. And and that was what he was so upset about that. There's never been a game that he couldn't just put us on his back and will us through it. And that one, he just absolutely couldn't do anything in that in those conditions. You know, people's telling me you know one game doesn't define you or your career or stuff like that. But you know. I mean, it, it's hard not to think about it, um, you know, just knowing that that was your last game and you didn't really go out there and, um, you know, execute the plan. Mason doesn't let things affect him like that and to have the weather affect him that much was, was crazy, so. I know I was honest with my dad because, I mean, he knows, he knows, you know, the talent and what we could have done with that. He watched him ride along there with me. And, I just kind of had to explain to him what I was thinking and going through um, out there on the football field. I just had to be honest with him about I couldn't feel the football. I, I couldn't throw the football where I wanted it to go. I didn't want no one to really know that during the game because I mean that's just a sign of weakness. Now I know it didn't end like we planned. So you got nothing to hang your head about. So we finally found somebody to stop our offense and her name is Mother Nature. I can live with, you know, going on. I'm not going to dwell on the game. We're just going to learn from it. I'm going to use it as fire, you know, for the, the rest of my life. Walking to the field, you know, I mean, I just kind of, I waited on Trevor and Mason because, uh, I don't know, I usually wait on, wait on one of the two. And uh, I just, one last time, I thought. And, you know, you think maybe it's a bad dream. Can't really dwell on it. I mean, if uh, losing a football game was the worst thing that happened in my life, then, uh, I have a pretty blessed life, so uh, that's the way you got to look at it. I'll probably go up, make a few visits to a few of the college around here, and uh, uh, leave leave one or two open. Hopefully, for another another one comes along. But uh, yeah, start. I mean, that's the kind of time it is right now. Let's work our way towards that and start communicating with some colleges. So. Now that we're seniors, we gotta, you know, focus on the recruiting stages now. Um, you know, just focus on school, you know, and applying for colleges and kind of figuring out what our next step's gonna be. I think I'm gonna start taking visits. Um, I've already had, you know, those Division II schools come and, you know, they're wanting to sign up, um, wanting to do official visits and, you know, I really can't be much more, and I'm be, still being patient and open up, but I'm gonna start taking my official visits to the um, top Division II schools and, kind of, you know, create that relationship with them and start narrowing it down because, I mean, it's getting to that time. You know, hopefully, I'll save one official visit to some, if something happens later on and hopefully maybe something will come along. But um, other than that, it's just um, now I can kind of focus a little bit more on recruiting. Mason Fine. He's all right. <laughs> he would make things happen when you didn't think they could happen. He would 
step up when you when you had to have him step up. And nobody takes losing harder than he does. The only reason he's not being recruited by every college in America, everybody knows the stories because he's not tall enough. I'll tell you right now, if they could measure this heart, if they could pull it out of his chest and measure his heart, every college would be sitting right here trying to get him to sign there. And mark it down, everybody write down here. Mason Fine will be playing in the NFL. He'll get his shot. He's got the heart of a champion. He's got the drive. He's got the want to. And on top of it all, he's got the character. Where when some people it'd be more important to be out going out and doing whatever you want to do after the game on Friday nights, he's gonna lift weights and he's gonna watch some more film and make sure he can get better for next week. There's no way to replace him. We're just gonna know that he left his legacy as we watch these young kids get better next year because he taught them how to go win. Our quarterback, Mason Fine. Holy cow. Career yards up into 5,000 career receiving yards. He's had, I mean, it's just, it, you start looking at his stats and it's unbelievable. You start watching the highlight film and, and the knock on him is he's not fast enough. But yet he always it gets open. He always catches the ball. Somehow, Mason would just throw it, and there would be Jason to catch it. Said every record there was last year was double covered, triple covered this year, and still had catch after catch, touchdown after touchdown, and then turned around and had to play almost every down of defense too. And it was our punt returner, our kick returner. He didn't get to come off the field much. He's a great leader, great young man, work ethic's unbelievable. I have no doubt whichever college takes him, we're going to be reading about him and hearing about him for a long time playing college football. Jason Pertle. Love you, brother. Um, before going down there, I pretty much knew I was probably going to um, go to North Texas. I pretty much told them that, hey, you don't need to worry about anything. I'm coming down to North Texas. I'm loyal to you guys. Now, there was times where you know, I was you know, asking myself, Hey, will I ever get that shot at Division One, or anything like that? And um, I never lost faith that I could play Division One ball because I always believed down deep down in myself that I could. And um, that's and that's when I thought even if I didn't get a scholarship or you know the opportunity to go down there, um, deep down I was more leaning towards being a preferred walk-on. Uh, Jason, <laughs> uh, North Texas, uh, it's gonna be great down there. Many new coaches. I'm excited. Yeah, it's been kind of stressful and. You know, it was really, really good to finally, you know, kind of officially make it real. And, you know, you know I got a chance to call home somewhere and a uh, chance to follow my dreams. And, you know, so it's good relief. And, you know, I'm excited to get down there and uh, have an opportunity. Without further ado, Jason Pertle will be signing at the University of North Texas. It was surreal, you know. You know, and everybody out there clapping. You know, you got your family. And, uh, you know, it was really, really stress relieving. And, uh, you know, kind of, kind of glad to get it over with. But, uh, you know, it was uh, something that, you know, you never get to really experience again, I guess, so. But at this time, Mason Fine will be signing with North Texas Mean Green. God has a plan. God puts you where he wants you to be. And, and I, just, I think it's going to be a great deal. They're going to have a great time. They're going get to get their degree. And who knows what happens after this? You know, you may be doing the Mason Jason story in five years of both graduating North Texas going into the draft. You know, so you just never know. This town's um, all you could ask for from a community, all the support, all what they do for us, not just for me, but the whole team and the whole program of football. And, you know, they support every other program like that. So, um, Lux Grove will you know, always have a special place in my heart. The support I've had from this place and uh, this whole community, the school, and everybody around here, you know, it's a, it's a good memory that I'll have. And uh, I appreciate everybody that's been there for me and helped me get to where I am today. You know, I'm walking on, so, uh, you know, kind of got that chip, you know, and uh, I'm still confident, I'm confident that I'm as good as anybody down there, and, uh, you know, I gotta go prove that. So, I mean, that's kind of being a chip on my shoulder to use for now until whenever I finish my career, and, 
I mean, I'll use that to fuel the fire a little bit, you know, and uh, I mean, either way, I'm going to go work hard. Either way, but uh, you know, this gives me a little bit, a little bit of an edge. I'm always going to play with the chip on my shoulder um, because I have to. Um, people's always going to doubt me just because of my size. So I've been living like that. I've been living with that chip on my shoulder my whole life. You know, people tell me I'm too small. So um, not, nothing's going to change. Um, nothing's going to change my work ethic, my attitude, my thought process, or any of that. So you know, I'm just going to go into um, every game and every practice like you know, like it's my last. And have something to prove.